Quran titties. <laughs> the isolation hands. Are you listening to something? I'm voice not. Oh, like, are we, are we live? We, well, we were, but it's okay. So, we don't have to be. Just did some. Just... Look what we got. For gold <gasps> dust. And responsibly, only one pack. Gonna well sell done. these on eBay as well. Oh my god. And you, <laughs> and you got recycled toilet tissue. Well done, you. So someone else has been wiping her ass with these. <laughs> We're so lucky. Oh, did you get a breakfast from downstairs? Oh, stop it. Supporting what local. Eggs. Yeah. That, that is yeah. sexual. So, and I was gonna mention this. Um, oh, my elf is popping out again. The coffee shop below us are staying open at the moment for takeaway. They also deliver into our building. But from Monday, so I went down yesterday to get some pastries to, as Hainsey said, support the local business and um they had eggs down there and from monday they're getting more fresh produce so they're getting pasta flour i think i think they've got tomatoes loads of stuff so it's nice to do these little things because obviously we know that like financially it's going to be a massive struggle and i love this coffee shop below us um and i want to keep supporting them as much as we can so it's good that we can still do that in these tough times oh it's actually warm out here Hi everyone, so how are you? How are we all doing? It's Tuesday the 24th today and I tried to vlog a bit on Sunday but I started and then sort of stopped and then yesterday I didn't really feel like vlogging. Um, yesterday evening uh, the announcement was made that the UK is going into a more official kind of lockdown as in like an enforced one. Not as strict as other countries we can still leave the house but there's parameters around that because i think and quite rightly i think the government was trying to trust that people would just do the right thing and they wouldn't have to enforce measures like this that didn't really happen over the weekend i don't think people were out in parks and stuff so they've had to enforce it slightly more and i think just since friday when it was even announced that everything well more things were going to be closed I think I mentioned I felt relief but I think I'm kind of going through like a almost like a mourning period which I think is normal like I feel like a lot of people I've spoken to and that I see on social media are having different moods and feeling motivated and unmotivated and I think that's just a symptom of what's happening and it's completely normal so I'm kind of just letting it run its course it's almost like lamenting the life that we once had that's now very, very quickly changed. And of course, there's going to be an adjustment to that. So it's okay to not wake up and feel that, that motivated and to be, I guess, lazy and not feel that productive. Especially now, I think everyone's really like, and you know, I can understand as well, trying to just almost distract themselves from what's going on by being like, oh, to be super productive and, you know, work on those things that you haven't had a chance to which is great but I do feel like for this first week at least it's going to be a big big transition for a lot of people and we are kind of you know mourning a loss I suppose and it being Mother's Day not being able to spend time with our families and like for me not being able to go and see my family because they live a bit further away and being pregnant as well and just I had Time was such a precious thing for me this year anyway, because I am due to have a baby in September. Um, and I know it's not a huge big deal in the grand scheme of things, but I, d I just was very conscious of the time I wanted to spend with people just as me. And now that, I don't know if that can really happen. So it's fine. It's definitely not the end of the world, <laughs> as it may feel. Um, it's not the worst thing that could be happening, but ultimately it's something I am sad about. So. It's just taken me a few days to adjust, I suppose. And so I haven't really felt like being on camera because I want this to be like a positive place. We'll talk about what's going on for sure. And like in the comments, it would be great to know how... Oh, sorry. You can hear someone wheeling something outside. I've got the door open, which has been lovely. I've just been sitting out in the sunshine. I'm so thankful to have the outdoor space that we have. And the sun's really warm today, so it's been lovely sitting out this morning. Anyway. If you guys like let me know how you're coping and what you're doing with the time and but I just want to keep things positive I don't want people to feel scared or, or worried or anything like that and I know you guys won't won't kind of do that 
um, to like take it to that place because as I've mentioned before, the comment section is really lovely, so I just want to keep it like that. And yeah, I thought maybe I would just mention a few things that I have been trying to do to keep myself sane. <laughs> um, I mentioned on Sunday I just wanted to have a normal Sunday, and we did have a normal Sunday. Went out for a walk, um, appropriately distanced, and we did pop to the supermarket, which we had done in the morning, and then came home and I cooked a roast, and that was that was it and <clears throat> uh, similarly that's kind of what we're trying to do every day and um, we came up with like a schedule yesterday of our days because yesterday again we didn't really do much we didn't go out the house and it just felt like such a long day I've been trying to keep routine as much as I can because I feel like <clears throat> it would be very easy to start going to bed later and sleeping in later and then just lazing around and not really doing much and having the TV on all day and before you know it, it's 3pm and I hate that time in, of the afternoon at the moment, like I don't know what it is, like just after lunchtime, that mid-afternoon, like 3pm to 5pm, there's something about that time that I just don't love. I love the mornings up until like 2pm. And then the evenings are fine, but it's just that part of the day that I really struggle with. I have been making sure that I get up before nine o'clock. I have noticed that I've started to sleep a little bit later. I generally wake up at like around six-ish and can sometimes be wide awake for like seven, seven thirty. But it's definitely like I, I woke up today at twenty past eight. So I've been making sure that I can try and get out of bed by nine o'clock at the latest, but between eight and nine come in have my breakfast I'll look at my phone and watch some YouTube I'm not really watching the news because I find it a little bit too much in the morning um, I'm just watching the uh, government's updates in the evening I make sure I get ready every day so I put a bit of makeup on I'll wash my face I'll get dressed like a normal morning routine so then by half 10 11 I mean a late -ish, a lazy morning routine like a weekend morning routine but just so that then by half 10 11 I'm kind of you know ready for the day i'm not still in my pajamas i'm not still sitting around i'll put the radio on or listen to a podcast um if i have anything to do on the computer i will do it um and kind of make a plan so like i want to clean the fridge i want to clean the bathroom just making a list of things i needed to sort around the house and then factoring that into the week so i almost have a bit of a structure and then yesterday Hainsey and i were putting together a schedule for both of us for our day so we've got some board games we've got a puzzle so we were like okay well let's do this morning routine so he's just having a workout and having a shower at the moment and then we are off our phones for most of the day and unless we really need to if someone's texted us or something but we're not just sitting on our phones we're kind of trying to do things together so a game or a puzzle um, go for a walk we think we're gonna go for a walk every day and maybe read for a little bit I might pick up some magazines it could be a good time to get into magazines again but yeah that's generally the gist of our days because I have freelancey stuff that enables me to work from home sometimes that's obviously gone very quiet now and then my part-time job is not something I can do from home um, and then hair <laughs> I need clients for that and so as you can imagine I don't really have any at the moment because everyone's cancelled um, which is fine. On the agenda today as I say is probably a walk at some point. I want to make a banana bananary, banana and blueberry loaf because um, I've got some blueberries that I think are going to go bad that I got from the market last week when it was still open. Banana and blueberry and chocolate chip bread actually is ready to go in the oven. Still no baking parchment. Some of you may remember that I did this a while ago and I had no baking parchment slash greaseproof paper. And I still don't have any, so that's fine. We're just gonna hope for the best again because that's what you need to do. So that was a lovely way to spend half an hour or however long that just took me to do. Um, I feel like I might bake every day because it's a really nice thing to do in the afternoon. You know, I was saying earlier, like I don't like around 3 p.m. Well, it's like 3.30 now. So Hainsey and I might go for a walk in a bit. He's actually just on the phone outside on the balcony in case you can hear him, but I don't think you can. At this time in the day, it's quite a nice thing to do. So 
I've just had some Frank Ocean on and it's a really lovely, lovely day and lovely afternoon. It's still quite warm. Um, we've been sitting out on the balcony, as I've mentioned, in the sun. So it's been quite a nice day today, even though we've just been at home. Banana and blueberry loaf is done, but we did have a bit of a mishap because the bottom stuck to the to the tin. So I'm calling it my upside down banana and blueberry loaf cake. Okay, it's dinner time. Just thought I'd show you what is on the menu because it's a bit of an experiment. I thought I'd give something else a go. It doesn't look that appetizing actually in the pan. I'm hoping it'll be nice. We've just got some chicken, roasted potato and asparagus and it's in like a balsamic garlicky type glaze, I suppose. I had asparagus and needed to use it. So I thought let's give a go in this. And it's like a big one pan thing. Because I did want to get that book, the roasting tin, which I think has all this kind of stuff in it so that you can just chuck everything in one pan and shove it in the oven and you're good to go. So this is like my little attempt at it. So we'll see how, see how we get on and hopefully it doesn't taste disgusting. Good morning everybody. So it is Wednesday. I feel like this vlog's gonna be all over the place, but I think that makes sense because we are all over the place really, aren't we, as a nation, as a world. So I'm going to so yeah, it's the morning. I have possibly still got the remnants of last night's makeup on. Because I just there's just no point in anything at the moment. No, there is, there is, stay positive. So, I'm gonna just do a little bit of my skincare now. I thought I'd do it with you because I keep going on about it. And if I don't do it now, I'm just never gonna do it, am I? So I'm gonna cleanse. Oscar Renaissance Cleansing Gel is my cleanser of choice. I also do like the Soy Fresh Face Cleanser. And for those that are interested, this is all pregnancy safe. All these products are fine to use during pregnancy. I, oh, look quite right there. But yeah, I love this cleanser because it's it's called a gel, but it actually kind of turns to a milk when you add water to it. And you can use it on your eyes as well. So I like a cleanser that I can use on my eyes because I generally use my cleanser to take my makeup off. So I can be quite lazy. <laughs> and just in general, like when I cleanse my face, I just like to get my eyes involved. My muslin cloth is from Evelon. They come in packs of three. They're lovely, highly recommend. Uh, Lizelle do some great ones also. For a water cleanser, I really rate this It Cosmetics Miracle Water. I'm always a bit sceptical when cosmetic brands launch skincare, but I've used two, three things actually. This, the Confidence in a Cleanser, and then also the Confidence in a Lotion, all from It Cosmetics, and I love them all. This I generally use as my day moisturiser. I will do the Oskia as my first cleanse to take off my makeup, and then... This is my second cleanse usually of choice. It's the Kate Somerville Exfoliate Cleanser. I'm sure I've spoken about this before. I have oily combination skin with um, like texture and open pores and I feel like this is the perfect cleanser for that skin type. Um, I just love it and you can use this daily. So highly recommend that. If I want to exfoliate some more or I'm gonna do a mask, I will use the Tatcha Rice Polish. This is the deep one, but there is also which I actually have. This is the classic one, which is for like a normal skin. This one is great for like an oilier skin. And it's just like, like um, it's called the rice polish, but it's like a powder. And it's one of those ones that you add water to. It foams slightly. You can leave it on your skin for a bit and then take it off with a cloth and it's a good exfoliation, but quite a gentle one. Um, so I love this if I'm about to do a face mask. And that face mask is usually, I don't generally do clay masks really anymore. I mostly will do like an AHA type situation um, and I really like the Oskia Renaissance mask which is brightening. Um, also Ren, their glycolactic mask I love. These all feel a bit like jam on your skin but I really like them. So if I'm doing a mask that would generally be what I do. Or this one which is a little bit more intense, the Elemis Dynamic Resurfacing Gel Mask as well. And I like this one because it's in a pump. And then I always, always use a toner. The two that I love are pretty much kind of the similar things. The Rodeal Glow Tonic is like a vitamin C one, a similar to like the Pixi Glow Tonic, and then the Ordinary Glycolic Acid 7% Toning Solution. This is really cheap, really recommend it. Pretty much the same thing as this, but I do feel like this is possibly a bit stronger. 
So I'm going to talk about that Miracle product that I keep mentioning from Dr. Dennis Gross that I have been using for my pigmentation. You may notice that my melasma on my top lip, for those of you that may remember, is so much better. I can still see a tiny bit and I do have it like my tash needs doing. Um, so that doesn't help, but it's so much better than it was. I used to watch videos back and just be like, oh my God, you can still see it. And now when I watch videos back, I feel like you can't as much at all. Um, and it's the Dr. Dennis Gross Professional Grade IPL Dark Spot Concentrated Serum. I don't know how readily available this is at the moment. I heard it was, I don't know, they were, re they were doing something to it and so had recalled it and then it will come out again. But if you struggle with hyperpigmentation and melasma, you will, un like I have tried to use everything. I bought ascorbic acid from The Ordinary, pure vitamin C, anything topical that is recommended for pigmentation I have used and it has never even remotely faded it at all. Because um, when you've got severe, severe pigmentation, nothing topical will, will really do anything. So this was kind of my last step of over-the-counter stuff before I was thinking I might just have to have laser. It says it's ascorbic acid, lactic acid and licorice root. So I don't know if maybe, I, d I never tried a lactic acid by itself. Perhaps if I had have done, I might have seen results. Something like, oh, so do a lactic acid peel now, which probably would be very good. But yeah, I would just apply it literally just to my top lip. Um, and then I sometimes have some pigmentation there, a bit of scarring on my chin. And then I know that there's pigmentation that comes up here when I go in the sun. So I will only apply it where I know my pigmentation is really bad. And yeah, it's really expensive. But for me, someone that's tried everything and nothing's worked, it's worth every penny. So if you can get hold of this, do. If not, wait until it comes out again and use it because it's amazing and then for a day serum very hyaluronic acid two percent plus b5 which is good um i did have the luxury of being able to try the barbara sturm hyaluronic acid i'm not going to recommend it because it's 235 pounds which i just think is absurd for a hyaluronic acid but it's amazing the evlom hydration Intense Hydration Serum is very similar to the Barbara Stern one. This one I find takes a while to sink in and feels quite tacky on the skin. So if you're in a rush, it's a bit annoying. But, and as I say, I wasn't that bothered about hyaluronic acid. Um, I was like, oh, it's just for hydration. So yeah, it's anti-aging, but I need like a more intense serum. Then I saw Jessica Diner, who is the Vogue Beauty Editor, say that she used hyaluronic acid every single day and her skin's amazing. She was like, it's the one thing I just wouldn't go without. So I was then like, okay, I need a hyaluronic acid. Yeah, you don't, it's not something that you need to spend silly money on, but it does make such a difference to your skin. Um, so now I use it morning and night <laughs> because Jessica Diner told me to. And generally with my skincare, I won't do it today because I don't want to be that naked on camera, but I do pull everything down my neck and my chest because the skin on both those areas is very delicate and that's what ages you. So then we'll move on to eye cream. And again, eye cream is something, I don't know what it is. I've just been really obsessed with it. I think I started using it when I was 14. I'm now 35 and I feel like, I mean, apart from here, I feel like we're doing okay in the eye area. Now that I'm in my 30s, I do use a more anti-aging one. I used to just use um, like the elderflower eye gel from the body shop I used for years when I was much younger. And then Clinique All About Eyes and the Origins Eye Doctor, I think, is amazing. If you're in your 20s, they're two great ones. Um, now I have moved on to, as I say, a slightly more anti-aging one. So I am using the Sunday Riley Autocorrect Brightening and Depuffing Eye Contour Cream. The thing about eye creams is I don't feel like I see a massive difference, to be honest. So I wouldn't be like, oh my god, this one's amazing. What matters to me is that I don't react to it. Um, just because I don't know why, but my eye area can be quite sensitive. So I've had it often where I'll be using an eye cream and then like one eye will just be really sore um, and quite tender. So the main thing for me is that I just don't react to it. And then as long as it's got peptides in it, it's hydrating. Um, I don't really mind to, like darkness isn't a massive concern for me. But this is like a one size fits all eye cream, it does everything. Uh, then it's time for my day moisturiser and as I say, 
I'll generally use uh, the It Cosmetics Confidence in a Gel Confidence in a Gel Lotion because this is a gel. I love water gel textures because I have oily skin. Oh, hang on, another serum, sorry, if you want hydration that's great, is the Elemis Superfood Seeker Calm. I started trying this and I really like it as well. So if the hyaluronic acid is too thick and gloopy for you, this is a lovely one, especially if you're very oily because it's that water gel consistency. To be honest, the whole superfood range, if this were night time, my night moisturizer would be this, which is the superfood night cream. I also have the day cream, which is great. Um, Elemis just, on the whole, I feel like it's a brand that you can't go wrong with. Um, I use a separate neck cream because I'm extra like that. And the only places that do the McLaren's LMS, I think Shantakai have one, but it's quite hard to find a neck specific cream. But if I can, I like to use one. Um, and the LMS one is lovely. Again, it's like, um, it's not too thick. Anyway, so day moisturizers. It Cosmetics I love. This one I've been using from Beauty Pie, but I'm, I'm Honestly, I'm just using it up. I've used a few things from Beauty Pie and I'm not massively impressed. This, to me, just feels like Nivea. Like, it's not, and I mean, it's not expensive, so it doesn't matter. But the way they try and pitch their brand as being very similar to luxury products, I don't think they are. But that's just me and I haven't tried loads from them. So today I'm gonna use my It Cosmetics. And then my Elemis neck cream. And I tend to like, go upwards. So I'm not dragging the skin. So there we go, I feel like that's all I've got to talk about. I'll then do a little bit of lip balm. This is just one that I took from Soho House when we stayed there. And it's the Cowshed Lippy Cow Natural Lip Balm. It's a really nice one. I also like the Glossier Balm.com. Coconut's my favorite one. And that's about it for lip balms actually. It's those two. Barbara Stern does a lovely one. That's it, so that's my skincare. I don't know how much of this vlog that's going to have taken up. I think probably quite a lot. Um, but yeah, I'm going to maybe put a... Actually, I don't really need to put makeup on, do I? Hello, everybody. I'm just coming on to end this vlog because I didn't end this vlog. I have just been doing work today. I've had some freelance stuff that I've been working on. So it's been... Oh, my hair's falling out as well. Um, so, which has been welcomed because it's made today quite productive and now it's like 10 past six. I've just been editing this vlog. I just wanted to sign it off and say thank you so much for getting this far because it's such a long vlog. I hope you guys are all holding up well. I will be trying to vlog and post a vlog like every few days, like so maybe twice a week, we'll see. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not. Hope you guys are doing as well as you can and I will see you on the next one.